What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is GD and today we're going to be jumping into Tier 0 Abyssal Dead Space. This video is a full beginner tutorial where we're going to start with a quick refresher on how the Abyss works and then we're going to jump into some fits that are very accessible early on that I think will make you a lot of risk. If you like this type of content, please go ahead and smash that like button at the bottom for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me out a lot and let's jump right in. So the Abyss is a piece of content that was added to the game about two years ago along with the Tragaladian Invasion storyline. So it consists of a kind of mini game where you open a wormhole to a pocket of stable Abyssal dead space. In this pocket, you're gonna find enemy spawns that you need to kill, and you're also gonna find caches that you can destroy and loot. Once the spawns are killed, a new gate is going to open and allow you into a sequence of two more similar pockets with the final gate leading you back to an old space. The pocket themselves are a sphere with a defined border, and any time spent outside of that will lead to exponential damage the further up you go. You have a total of 20 minutes to complete all three rooms before the abyssal dead space filament, if you will, collapses and traps you in there and blows up your ship. So to open the wormholes, we use filaments. So you can find the information about these up here in the Agency tab. If you go to Encounter, Abyssal Dead Space, Filaments and Weather down here, and then you have all the information. As you can see over here, there's five different Abyssal weather types that are all going to apply effects to all the ships and the drones in the Abyss. These are going to affect everything on your ship from your, your capacitor, your shield, your armor, your range, your speed, and additionally, it's also going to give you penalties to your resistance bonuses. So it's very important to first thing, come in here, take a look at all these different types and how they affect your ship, because it's going to be the main thing that's going to determine the type of ship you use, the type of weapons you use, and the type of ammo that you take with you as well. And on the right side here, there are seven different levels of filaments, so you can recognize them by their name and also by the little bars that they have at the top. So today we're going to be focusing on the Tranquil Filaments, which are basically tier zero. And I'm going to teach you guys how to get into those as fast as possible and how to farm them for a bunch of risk. So my goal in making this video was to bring you guys a fit that you could get into very early on that would be very easy to train into. And that would make you a decent amount of this pretty quickly in tier zero Abyssal. So this is what we have here. And this account that I'm on is actually an alpha account that I've never trained before. The fit that we have here, you can tell right away, you're able to fit it on day one through the CPU and able to fit all the power to it as well. The fit is not cap stable, but that's okay because we won't always be using both armor repairers over here. So you can see if we turn one off, we are actually stable over here. The fit itself will be linked below as well for you guys. So in terms of training time, if we add all of these skills to the queue over here, and let's take a look at how much time it takes to train this. And so we see here in total 15 hours and 44 minutes, which you could actually cut down quite a bit uh, just by going through the link in the description of the video and start a brand new account with 1 million extra skill point. So you can just assign the skill points to the skills that you're trying to train um, and some additional ones as well. So in terms of numbers for the fit, what we're looking at here at very close range, we're going to go and get 98 DPS and this will be at our longest range. We will get 73 DPS. In terms of armor repair rates, we've got 26 HP per second, and that's just raw HP. So in terms of EHP, we're actually gonna be closer to about 50, 55 EHP per second. It is cap stable on the long range ammo, and unfortunately, it's not cap stable on the short range ammo. All right guys, so we're back a day later. This clone has had time to train the skills, and we're ready to jump into some filaments. Now, before we do that, a few additional notes here. First of all, this fit that I showed you guys is not the final version. Okay, this is very important. As you train more skills, you can make some replacements on here and switch some stuff around. Um, so for example, if you train some capacitor skill, maybe you don't need all three capacitor rigs up here, you could replace one with an armor rig to improve your armor repair rate. Um, additionally, we're gonna be taking this fit into electrical filaments and firestorm filaments so that you can see the different effects that both of those are gonna be having on the ship. And finally, this is not the only fit that works in tier zero Abyss. So this is merely just a starter fit. Once you guys are able to run this, once you get a little bit of experience, I would highly recommend that you start looking into some Kestrel fits over here, some Tristan fit that will rely a lot more on drones, which I think is a very good direction to take since tier one through six will typically be run with drone ships. All right, so I am in Jira currently, so let's go ahead buy everything we need and let's jump into some filaments here. 
Now that this is done, let's go ahead and pick up the filament screen. So we're looking for tranquil electrical filament. Let's buy three of these. Let's go ahead and buy three of these as well. And I'll show you guys in a minute why we are buying three and not just a single one. Okay, so what's this here? Let's make this three up here. Perfect, we've got everything we need. Let's go ahead and unlock. Right. Additionally, if you guys like this type of content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is the type of content I wanna keep putting out. And I'd love to hear from you guys what you think of this. Maybe just drop in the comments, let me know what you think. Let me know also what you'd like to see. Um, I try to make videos like this and I'd like to make some videos um, of a similar fashion to other aspects of EVE as well. So whatever question that you have about the game, I'll be happy to uh, happy to help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a safe spot here because to activate these filaments, you actually need to be a thousand kilometers away from any structure. So what we're gonna do is we're going to warp to within 70 of just this random planet here. I'm gonna be hitting Control B and it's going to open up the tab for a new bookmark. Let's go ahead, Control B. And now we're just going to submit this as a new bookmark. Okay, so this is a new location that I've created in the middle of nowhere that we're going to be using to um, to run the filaments out of. This is the overview that you start the game with. Um, you can upgrade it to something different if you want to. Wow, would you look at that. And we have someone that's running a filament right here at 30 kilometers from us. It's actually quite funny. So we're going to right click into space, go to location, go to spot in Jita, solar system, and warp to zero. Warp drive and we're going to leave this guy alone. My weapons down here, I'm actually going to group these and we're going to reorganize this. So I'd like to have my weapons first, my AB afterwards, and here we go. Everything else out of the way. So then we have both our armor repairs together at the back here and we'll see if we even need to, uh, to run those. I think we're going to go load in ultraviolet first and now we're going to get ready to open up these fillets. So first things first, you need to form fleet yourself. So you right click yourself, you right click the pilot and you right and you click form fleet with. And we're gonna close these windows that we don't need. Let's move the inventory down here. All right, and now because we are uh, running frigate sites, you need three filaments to enter a site with a frigate, which is why I've got three of them over here. So we're just gonna double click these and we're gonna go, we've selected the three frigates over here. We're gonna go activate for fleet. It's going to deploy a filament over here. Okay, so interestingly enough, it's not showing it on the overview here. So we're gonna go abyssal dead space. First, we're going to add abyssal dead space to overview. And then we're going to um, activate gate. There we go. Activate. Now make sure you guys watch the video until the end because after we're done running some filaments I'm actually gonna have three extra tips for you guys on how to improve a lot faster. And let's jump into this. So currently there's nothing in here. Let me see. General Okay, so we have everything. This is our bioadaptive cache. So this is the main cache. We're going to orbit this. And then we've got two Teslas over here that are going to um, to start uh, approaching me and try to blow me up. So these guys fly pretty fast. So we're gonna go to the short range ammo simply because um, yeah, they cover range and they're, they're gonna cover my range of long range ammo very quickly. So there's no point in even uh, even using it. Now we are in an electrical filament, so you see here we get 50% uh, capacitor recharge bonus and 30% EM resistance penalty. So a lot of the damage that we deal here is EM, so that's why this guy is actually going down fairly quickly. Now this guy is within my range here, so we can see my range is optimal within 7200 meters and fall off range 98. So that first guy was within my range, let's blow up this second guy as well. And once again, um, what I did up here when I came into the filament is I clicked the cache, click orbit, my orbit here, standard orbit is um, at a thousand. And you want to orbit because it's gonna keep you moving and it's gonna make these guys, make it a lot harder for these guys to hit you. Now this audio cue that we just got, I believe it's because my shields just went past 30%. So I'm gonna start with my armor repair. 
And uh, these are going to boost at the end there. See? Fully boosted my armor back up. No problem. This guy's going to die soon. And as soon as that's done, uh, we're going to blow up the cache. There we go. I'm going to approach the cache first and then blow it up. And the reason why I do that is because if you're orbiting the cache and you blow it up while you're orbiting, it just sends you shooting in the direction that you were pointing at the time that it blew up. Then we open this up. So 700,000, very good. And we keep going. So fairly simple. What you guys will see here is that because we are in a non-electrical filament, I actually am cap stable now because of the bonus that we have for the cap recharge. Um, so this wouldn't be the case just in known space outside of the uh, outside of the missile that's space. All right, two more Teslas, no problem. Let's over the cache. And let's see here. Let's look at radio. What is radio going to give us? Radio is actually our longest range. Much lower damage per second, though. So about 43 DPS, 26 kilometer max range. Let's see how this works out. Let's target the first guy. Let's start hitting him right away. To target and just by clicking here, so you can you can target by selecting and then actually clicking the target up here, or you can hold control on your keyboard and then click the targets and it's going to um, to target them, target lock them. Okay, so we can see I'm hitting him right now, but I'm really not doing as much damage. So we can stop this, right click, load in multi frequency, and go ahead and keep hitting. All right, he's dead. Let's move on to the next one. All right, we keep going. Then this is our final room, and we actually get a cruiser ship here to fight, which is fine, no problem. It is possible that we might need to use the ultraviolet. I believe the ultraviolet is our mid-range, yeah, 15 to 15 kilometers, or 13 to 15 kilometers, rather. So I've loaded that in, select the cache again, make sure we're orbiting that. And as you can see right away, he starts hitting me, so he's shooting missiles at me. Um, Missiles will apply less damage if you're moving a little faster. The exact numbers for that are, um, it requires high level maths to figure out exactly exactly how much damage you're going to be taking. But the gist of it is keep moving against missiles. So this is going to be a slightly longer fight. Uh, cruisers just tend to have a lot more HP. My hands are literally off the keyboard right now. Uh, we're just orbiting the cache. The guns are activated and um, he's just eventually gonna kill him. Cash and once more time and one more time let's blow it up and get the goods right it's all and let's get out of here so this is our origin conduit so this is the la last gate that brings us back to gnome space Total time here, 12 minutes and a half left, which gives us seven minutes and a half to do the filament. Why am I not jumping on right now? Come on. There we go. All right, and now let's take a second to take a look at what we actually got out of this. So we came in here with the electrical filament. Um, we found an extra elect uh, Firestorm one in here, so let's just take it apart here. 
So this is the loot that we actually got in this 1.9 mil. So it's a little bit low. Typically tier zero is actually 2.5 mil, uh, but it does fluctuate quite a bit. So now we're going to go into a Firestorm one. So what you'll see is that it's going to be just a little bit more dicey because our capacitor is going to drain a lot faster. So we won't be able to run the armor repairs the same way we were running them in the electrical one, just non-stop without even thinking about it. We're going to have to actually manage it a little bit more. So let's go ahead and let's check it out. Okay, so nothing new here. It's the same two ships as we had earlier. So the Teslas, you can recognize. So this is a Tesla here. One is a blast needle. The other one is a strike needle. Their name determines the type of damage that they apply. So the blast needle applies explosive damage and the strike needle applies kinetic damage. So these are important things to know. Um, not so much at this level, but when you get into higher levels, it's important to know what type of damage they do. Because if you have a resistant soul for that particular type of damage, you'll want to focus down those uh, those ships first. All right, these guys are doing a decent amount of damage here. I have to start repairing. Now let's go back over here and let's take a second look at this real quick. Uh, oh, we are actually cap stable in here. That's interesting. Did I train some extra skills by accident? I might have trained an extra capacitor skill by accident. Nevertheless, that's, that's a good thing, actually. That means that, yeah, in your first day, you can be 100% cap stable with this skill, which is really freaking awesome. All right, let's stop this and let's load our multi frequency ammo since he's much closer. There we go. I'm using hotkeys to activate a lot of these things. You don't see it, you just saw the. Uh, the weapon activate that's because it's linked to f1 so if your mouse is over it you can see top right corner of that box f1 so that's a hotkey to uh, to activate this guy there we go wow 2.3 mil in the first cache here that is a very good first cache. One more Lancer. I'm going to fast forward this part of the video so you guys don't have to uh, see the whole thing because it's going to take a while. Once, one more time. All right, we're done. That took a while. I find the Amar ships are definitely the coolest looking ones. Um, just a lot of gold and white. It's just so classy. 900,000, so almost one mil here. And let's jump into the final one. As you notice at some point, I actually turned off one of my two armor repairs simply because I didn't need it. So I wanted to show you guys that, that you don't always need to run both. It just depends on the incoming damage. Um, I would say that the Teslas actually do a lot more DPS, the two together, than what that um, that cruiser was doing. All right, and now we get a striking dam striking Damovic. So the striking Damovic is um, a triglavian ship. So he's going to try to hit me with one of his disintegrators. He's also a frigate. 
So we're going to have to be careful with this one because um, there is a small chance that he's hard to hit. The good news is he orbits fairly close, so we should be able to um, put most of our damage on him. He does a decent amount of damage. Uh, there we go. So he's burning through our armor fairly quickly, and we'll see how how our armor repair does against it. So at this point, he's moving fairly quickly. It's hard to see over here, but this is the velocity. It's 1,200 something meters per second. So he's moving fairly quickly um, and we're not missing yet. So that's a really good thing, but he is burning into our armor slightly faster than what one armor repair can repair. So we're going to throw on the uh, the second one as well. The Damovic and all of the Trigaladian ships, their damage actually spools up. So it does an increased amount of damage the longer they hit you for up to, I believe it's 150% bonus of their initial damage. So as it goes, that's why some of his damage was actually going over 100 DPS there, or damage per hit rather. Um, and now it's back down. It's because it's actually spooled down. But he's about to die. There we go. We just push the cash and blow up the cash. Open it up. Loot it. 1.2 mil. And let's get out of here. And thus concludes our second set of filaments. Um, so we did one electrical, one firestorm. Let's take a look at the total loot between the two of them. Uh, let's just stack everything here. So technically everything that's not ammo is now loot. Let's put all this together. So we got 6.4 mil between two, two sets of filaments, which is really good. It's a little higher than, than the average. Um, in total, the second one took us about nine minutes. So it brings us to about 16 minutes. So that's kind of the range. Once you get really good at running tier zero filaments, you should be able to do them in about five minutes. It depends a lot on the amount of DPS. So the more DPS you have, the faster you can burn down the cruiser types and just get to the cache faster, get out, move on to the next one faster. So if you're able to bring it down to five minutes and you average about 2.5 mil per filament, it should bring you a little bit higher than 30 mil per hour, which is a really, really good place to start. Now, as promised, Let's go back to the hangar, and I've got three extra tips for you guys on how to make this as fast of a progression as possible. So my three parting tips for you guys. Number one, don't try to go too fast. Taking a ship that you can barely fly into a higher level abyss tier is a very quick way to lose ISK. All right. Instead, you're much better off staying at the level that you're at and mastering that and getting really, really good at it. Tip number two. It's very important to connect with the community and learn from the community, all right? So this is why you come over here to the chat channel. Um, we open this up and we go to channels and we search Abyssal Lurkers and we click join, okay? This is going to open up a chat that uh, a guy created literally just for people that are running the Abyss. There's 378 people in there. I'm in there most of the time when I'm playing the game. And you just go in there and you ask questions. Okay, everyone's going to be chatting about their experience and people are going to be ready to give you tips. Everyone is super helpful. And finally, this brings me to our last tip, which is use the Abyssal Tracker. So the website is in the description, the message of the day of the chat here. You can also find it by just searching in Google Abyssal Tracker. Um, so if we open it up, it's going to bring us to this page over here. So as you can see, I'm already signed in on the right side here. Uh, and this is basically a, the best way to track your runs and the best way to find out information about the Abyss. So we have all the different tiers of Abyss over here. So we were just doing some tranquil ones. We can also see some calm runs. Um, and if we go to calm, which is the tier one, which is the next level that you should be looking at eventually as well, you can see the average loot for the different types of ship. So we can see that if you take a frigate into the comp filament, you'll make a lot more ace than if you take a cruiser into it. 
Down here, you can see the most popular fits. This fit down here is actually one of my fits. Uh, I have a similar to the video to the one that you're watching right now that I'll also have linked at the end of this video for you guys to take a look at. It's a tutorial on how to run T1 uh, filaments. A couple of important things that are in the tier one video, I also talk about the different types of mist that can be in the abyssal filaments. So we didn't see and we really didn't go into that much today. But what can happen is you come into a filament and there are some additional weather types than the ones just created by the filament itself. And those can boost your speed by 300%, can boost your signature radius so you can take a lot more damage, or can reduce the boost of your shields. So all that is in that other video as well. And that pretty much concludes everything for me uh, for this video for today, guys. Really happy that you, you watched the whole thing. Um, and once again, if you like this type of content, just hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well. It helps me out a ton for the YouTube al algorithm. And finally, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. So if you guys have questions, join the in-game chat, send me a message. Thanks and peace out.